Good morning, everyone. I hope you're well. We're here today with our next maths lesson. Okay, it is Wednesday. Let's move on and we're going to start straight away with our counting. Now, can you remember when we did this before? I'll count and you can join in with me and then we'll play a game of tennis counting. So let's go starting with zero to 30. Off we go. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Right, shall we have a game of tennis? Remember, I'll say one number, then you say the next one. I'll say the number after you, then it's your turn after that. All right, let's have a go at playing the game of tennis. And remember my little trick as well. You could say your number and then quietly say the next number when it's mine, and then use your big voice for the next number after that. Are you ready? Here we go. Zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. I hope you got on a bit better today. All right, keep practicing. You might be able to play that game with somebody in your house as well. Right, let's move on to one of our favorites. Where is the bear? Have a look, here's the bear, where is he? He is, that's right, he's next to the table. He is next to the table, or we could say he is beside the table. Let's have another go. Where's the bear? Here he is, he is under the table. The bear is under the table, or you could say beneath. The bear is beneath the table. Where is the bear now? Where's the bear? The bear is on the table. The bear is on the table. Where is the bear now? He's not on the table. Where is the bear? The bear is over the table. The bear is over the table, or you could say above. The bear is above the table. Okay, next one. <gasps> Where's the bear? Where's he gone? The bear is behind the table. The bear is behind the table. Where's the bear now? The bear is in front of the table. The bear is in front of the table. Okay, now we're going to have a go using our Numicon shapes, but instead of doing one more, we're going to do one less, or some people say one fewer. Okay, so let's start looking at this Numicon piece. What number is this Numicon piece? It is the number five. Well done if you said five. Now, one less or one fewer means that we're going to take one of them away. They're going to disappear. So it's the number that you might say before the number five. So let's have a look. There we are, it's vanished. So now we've got four left behind. So one less than five is four. Or some people say one fewer than five is four. There we are, the 
piece, this Numicon piece. It is the number three. Here we are, three. And one less or one fewer than three is, let's see, two. We've got two. So two is one less or one fewer than three. Two is one less than three. Two is one fewer than three. Okay, here we are. This is the number four. Show me four. There we are. We can do it that way as well. We've got four. And one fewer than four or one less than four. Let's have a look. Is the number three. One, two, three. One fewer than four is three. One less than four is three. Okay. Oh, there it is. Oh, did you see it? What shape was it? It was a triangle, wasn't it? Let's have a look. There we are. There's the triangle. And what can you remember about a triangle? Okay, it does. It has got three, hasn't it? It's got three pointy bits. What's that proper word though? Instead of saying pointy bits, we say three corners. One, two, three. We've got three corners, haven't we? And what are these called? There, and there, and there. They're called the sides, aren't they? Be careful not to say edges, because this shape doesn't have edges, it has sides. It's got one, two, three sides. And what's special about those sides? Are they wibbly wobbly? Are they curved? Or are they nicer and straight? That's right, they're straight. There are three straight sides on a triangle. Right, next shape, here we go. Right, here we are. Oh, what was that one? It was a square, wasn't it? And yesterday, we talked about a special thing about squares. They've got four straight sides, but those straight sides are all equal. They are the same, aren't they? Well done. Okay, there are four straight equal sides, and we've got one, two, three, four corners as well. Next one, here we are. Right, it's gonna be quick. Here we go, whoop. Did you see it? I'll do it one more time. There we are. Whoops, and it's gone. What was that shape there? Remember, it's got two names as well, hasn't it? You might call it a rectangle. You might call it an oblong. I sometimes call it an oblong because it reminds me it is a long shape. An oblong is a long shape, isn't it? What's special about this oblong? It's got one, two, three, four. Four straight sides, a bit like a square. But those straight sides, are they all the same? Are they equal? No, not on this one. We've got two short sides, one, two, and they're opposite sides, aren't they? And then it's got two long sides, one, two. Two long sides that are opposite each other. So two short and two long. And it's also got one, two, three, four corners. So four straight sides, two short and two long, and four corners as well. Let's move on. Here we go. Right, <gasps> how many in this five frame? Have a quick look. Here's the answer, it is five. There are five in this five frame because it is completely full. Here we are, how many this time? It's one, well done if you said one. How many now? There are four, because we know that if there's one empty space in the five frame, then the answer will be four. Here we go. How many now? There are two. You should be able to subitize that. You can recognize that straight away without counting. Here we are. That's right, two. Now, here we are. We're going to be thinking about how many again. How many apples are in this tree? Hmm, have a look. I 
think you could be able to subitize that as well, couldn't you? Here we are, let's have a look. It says, this tree has got three apples. One, two, three. There are three apples in the tree. Now look at this tree. How many apples have we got here? Mm, I can't see any apples, can you? There are no apples in this tree. And what do we say? There's a special word that we could use and we used it in the video yesterday. There are zero apples in this tree. It says this tree has zero apples. And remember zero means nothing, doesn't it? So there are, there is nothing in that tree. There are no apples. Have a look at this one. Ooh, have a look at this tree. What could you tell me now? If you've got a grown up there, tell them. There are no apples in that tree. There are zero apples in the tree. Here we go, look, and it says, this tree has zero apples. Looking at this tree now, how many apples can you see this time? Now, did you count or did you subitize? I think you could subitize because looking at this pattern, it looks a bit like a domino or on a die, on a dice. One, two, three, four, five. Here we are. This tree has five apples. There are five apples in this tree. Here we go. How many? Look at this hand. How many fingers are standing up? There are zero fingers standing up. There are zero fingers. Let's have a look. There are zero fingers. But what about this one? You can do it as well, can't you? There are five fingers. There are five fingers. Have a look at this hand. How many are there? Do that as well. I do it like this. There are three fingers. Can you say that? There are three fingers. And on this hand, tell a grown up if they're there. There are zero fingers. Let's check. There are three fingers and there are zero fingers. Okay, now, it's going to be a little bit tricky for you to do this at home because I haven't given you this, but I think you could have a go at drawing two trees. And what I'd like you to do in one tree, can you draw four apples? But in the other tree, I want zero apples. Could you do that for me? And then I'd like you to have a go at trying to draw zero flowers in a garden. So you might draw a lovely, lovely house, but with zero flowers in their garden. But with another house, could you put five flowers in their garden? And if you could, if you get a grown up to take a photograph, can they send it to us at school? Or could they send it via email or on Twitter? All right, and we'll look forward to seeing how you've got on with that work. Right, that's the end of today's lesson. I'll be back with another math session again very, very soon. Until then, you take care, be safe and be good. See you all soon. Bye, everyone.